Namaskar and welcome back to Aviation Abbey. Go where you feel the most alive. In today's video, we'll carry out calculation for permissible height of object allowed on either side of the runway edge. Firstly, we'll consider a situation where work is being carried out on either side of the runway edge within the runway strip. Further, we'll carry out a calculation where we have to carry out work beyond the runway strip where there may be an infringement of the transitional surface. So step by step, let's look into the calculation. Without any delay, let's get started. Firstly, let us look at the situation where work is to be carried out within the runway strip. And let us understand the conditions under which such works will be permitted based on the type of operations on the runway. How do we deal with temporary hazards on the runway strip? A temporary hazard includes work in progress within the runway strip in connection with airport construction or maintenance. So, it takes into account the plant, the machinery, the material arising from such work and aircraft immobilized near the runways. All hazards should be promulgated by NOTAM and should be marked and lighted as per the requirements of NX14. So, this is the basics of how we deal with temporary hazards on the runway strip. Here in this image, you can see that the runway strip is divided into three zones and based on the criticality of operations and the type of aircraft operations taking place on the runway and the runway surface conditions taking into consideration the crosswind, works are permitted on the runway strip. To understand the zones of the runway strip in detail, Firstly, let us look at the restrictions for non-instrument and non-precision approach runways. There are three zones alongside the runway that can be identified. The first zone being zone 1, that is 23 meters from the runway edge where the code is 2, 3 or 4 or 21 meters from the runway edge where the code is 1. So, this is zone 1. Work can be permitted in zone 1 only on one side of the runway at a time and the area of the obstacle should not exceed 9 meters square but narrow trenches may exceptionally be allowed up to 28 meters square. The height of the obstacle that is there in zone 1 must take into account the propeller or port clearance of the type of aircraft operating on the runway and the maximum height permitted in zone 1 is of 1 meter above the ground. No plant or vehicle may operate in this zone when the runway is in use. This is an important point. No plant or vehicle may operate in zone 1 when the runway is in use. If aircraft is immobilized in this zone, the runway shall be closed. So, we have understood the characteristics or the conditions under which will permit work to be carried out in zone 1. Now, let us move to zone 2. Zone 2 extends from the outer edge of zone 1 to the edge of graded strip for each class of runway. Restriction of operation in zone 2 depends on the type of weather and the type of operation taking place. Considering a dry runway and crosswind component not more than 15 knots for a code 4 runway and crosswind component not more than 10 knots for a code 2 or 3 runway, the following works will be permitted. If there are VFR operations taking place on the runway, there is unrestricted area of construction with length of excavation or excavated material parallel to the runway should be kept to minimum and the maximum height of excavated material can be 2 meters from the ground. All construction equipment in zone 2 should be mobile and kept within normal height limits. The runway may continue to be in operation when the aircraft is immobilized in this zone. Now, keeping all the conditions same, if there are IFR operations on that runway, there is unrestricted area of construction with level of excavation or excavated material parallel to the runway should be kept to minimum and the height of the excavated material should be kept to 2 meters above the ground. All construction equipment should be kept mobile and should have a normal, should be within the normal height limits while operating in zone 2 with IFR traffic. 
and the runway should be closed when the aircraft becomes immobilized in this zone in zone 2 with ifr operations carrying being carried out on the runway if an aircraft becomes immobilized here the runway should be closed now let us look at zone 3 this zone is applicable only to non precision approach runways when the runway is being used in poor visibility conditions or lower cloud base it extends from the edge of the graded portion of the strip to the end of the runway strip now this as mentioned in asm part 6 this distance is up to 150 meters but this value is under revision as we know that the strip extends to a distance of 140 meters no restriction there is no restriction of work being carried out in this zone however the vehicle associated with the works being carried out must not interfere with the operation of nav aids in order to understand the area that is critical and sensitive associated with navigation aids to refer to our video the link of which will be given in the description the runway strip not only extends on each side of the runway center line but also extends to a distance of 60 meters on each side of the threshold so under what conditions will we allow work to be carried out in this portion of the strip when work is taking place at runway ends use of alternate runway may be maximized or displacement of threshold may be explored so as to not compromise the effective runway strip and infringement of the approach surface in order to understand the calculation of displaced threshold to refer to our video the link of which will again be given in the description but when landing distance associated with that runway are critical it may be safer to permit an infringement near the runway end rather than displacing the threshold so in case we displace the threshold as done in this in this runway if displacing the threshold reduces the length of the runway to such an extent that it becomes unsafe for aircraft to land we will allow infringement of the approach surface to a certain extent rather than displacing the threshold now that we have understood the restrictions that are in place for non-instrument and non-precision approach runway let us briefly look at the restrictions for precision approach runway as we know that cat 3 operations are very critical and take place at very minimal visibilities no work should be permitted on any part of the movement area when the runway is in use all equipment should be outside the obstacle free zone or the ofz and all personnel should be withdrawn from the movement area for cat 1 or 2 operation no work shall be permitted in the obstacle free zone when the runway is in use and all metal material should be outside the obstacle free zone it is always a good practice to carry out pre-construction meeting where we discuss means and methods to minimize and control construction vehicles interfering with aircraft operations scheduling construction activity during minimum aircraft activity and deciding upon the construction material disposal and storage methods these are the ways that we can expedite the construction work while minimizing interference with aircraft operations now let us consider the situation where work is being carried out beyond the runway strip let us imagine excavation work is to be carried out at a distance of 41 meter from the runway strip using an excavator of height of 6 meters so by this we understand that the excavator that is being used is a temporary hazard and the excavated material that is coming out will be stored near the hole that is dug and the height of that excavated material also needs to be decided. Basically, we are carrying out excavation work that is we are digging a hole or let's say a drain at a distance of let's say 41 meters using an excavator which is a temporary hazard and this excavator extends to a height of maximum 6 meters. So, under what conditions will this work be permitted? How are we going to facilitate this work to be carried out? We were to carry out excavation work at a distance of 41 meters from the edge of runway strip. And the excavator had a height of 6 meters. So this obstacle falls in the transitional surface as we can see here. This surface has a slope of 1 is to 7 that is 14.3%. And this surface extends and goes up to a height of 45 meters that is it touches the 
in a horizontal surface. To understand these surfaces, that is obstacle limitation surfaces in detail, do refer to our video on obstacle limitation surface, the link of which will be given in the description. So, let us understand the problem first. Height of the object here is 6 meters. Distance proposed from the runway strip for excavation work to be carried out is 41 meters. The surface being considered here is the transitional surface which has a slope of 14.3% that is 1 is to 7. Let us calculate the height being permitted at a distance of 41 meters from the runway strip. So, as we know slope is equal to height upon distance. Thus, we have slope that is 1 by 7 is equal to height permitted at a distance of 41 meters. So, solving this gives us a height as 5.86 meters. But as we know that the proposed height of the excavator was 6 meter. So, the height permitted here is only 5.86 meters. So, the height of the excavator will infringe on the transitional surface by 6 minus 5.86 meters that is 0 0.14 meters. So, what do we do? Because there is infringement in the transitional surface that will take place in case we carry out work at a distance of 41 meters from the runway strip with the height of excavator of 6 meters. So in this case, we only have three solutions. Either to raise NOTAM and carry out work during NOTAM to minimize impact on operations or to reduce the boom of the crane by 0 0.14 meters and carry out the excavation work at the proposed distance of 41 meters so that we do not infringe upon the transitional surface here. Or to displace the excavation work further away from the runway strip such that the height of 6 meter of the excavator is no longer an obstacle infringing upon the transitional surface. Or, so this basically means if we displace or move this D further away from the runway strip, we can permit a height of 6 meters and this 6 meters will no longer infringe upon the transitional surface. So, to allow a height of 6 meter, how far do we actually have to displace, uh, displace the excavation work from being carried out? That is how, what will be the value of D in this case? Here again, the surface being considered is the transitional surface which has a slope of 14.3% that is 1 is to 7. So, slope is height upon distance that gives us 1 by 7 is equal to allowed height that is 6 meters upon the distance at which work can be carried out safely. This gives us a distance of 42 meters which means that if we carry out work at a distance of 42 meters from the runway strip keeping the height of the excavator as 6 meters, the work can be carried out safely and the work will not infringe upon the transitional surface. That is, we need to move this distance just by 1 meters from the proposed distance of 41 meters to no longer infringe the transitional surface. So, by choosing a solution out of these three, as you can see in front of your screens, we can carry out the excavation work in the runway strip without hampering aircraft operations. Hope you enjoyed this video on problem solving by Aviation Abbey. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. And stay tuned because we'll be coming up with more such problem solving videos. This is Anvesha Pal signing off. Thank you.